Hello, hello. Are you considering placing an order on the EX90? Or maybe you are considering just buying one out of the showroom floor at your local Volvo dealership. Or maybe you are thinking about if you should wait for the enhanced Molya 26. Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Because I have gotten several questions on this exact topic. Should you go Molya 25 or should you wait for the enhanced Molya 26? So if you are on the fence between Molya 25 and Molya 26, then this video are for you. And I really hope I managed to answer all of your questions. And if you have any more, just drop it down below. But let's kick it off. This is a Molya 25 EX90 twin motor. This is a press car from Volvo Car Norway. It's finished off in the vapor grey metallic. Brand new car. But is this EX90 Molya 25 already outdated? Is it yesterday's news? Because now we got a more improved, more enhanced and clearly the better EX90 with the introduction of the Molya 26. Should you wait? Is it worth the wait? Well, that's what we're going to talk about now. Because Volvo will primarily give it three key elements to enhance the Molya 26. And we're going to talk about these three key elements right now. And the first one being the processor chip. They will change over to a NVIDIA Orion Drive AGX processor chip. This will be highly beneficial for the car's infotainment, making it more uh, faster and more responsive to the touch. It will also be highly beneficial for all the car's core computing system, including the LiDAR on the roof. So this will really, and it will also solve many of the issues that the EX90 have been facing in the, uh, these first months. Been many software issues and things that have been delayed, but this processor chip will solve many of these issues. But the cool thing are, this processor chip aren't unique for the Molya 26, because Volvo have said that they will give all existing Molya 25 owners an upgrade, free upgrade at your Volvo workshop, that you can get this new processor chip. So this is actually not unique or exclusive for the Molya 26. All EX90 customers will get this processor chip. But then we come uh, to the next point after the processor chip. And that is actually regarding upholstery. Because when Volvo launched the EX90, it was only available in two upholstery styles. You had the tailored wool and you had this Nordico style. This is a vegan option, uh, non-leather, bio-based, more sustainable, uh, animal-free. Because Volvo wanted to be completely sustainable, animal-free. But customers gave them a lot of backlash because people still demand leather in this price segment. At least as an option. And luckily Volvo have listened to their customers and now finally leather are back. And don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of the tailored wool. I've owned the XC40 myself previously with that upholstery. And I also am a huge, I'm, a, I'm also a huge fan of this Nordico upholstery. It looks great. This exact one, however, this one doesn't have the ventilation. In some markets you could get the Nordico but without ventilation, like here in Norway. So on yesterday's, or maybe the day before yesterday, I drove like 500 kilometers on a highway. The sun was just burning and I actually got kind of sweaty in, in, in the back. So I would love to get the ventilation. That is a must have for me if I should go for the Nordico. But at least leather are available as an option now for Molya 26. Slightly softer and it feels maybe more luxurious. And also I love the smell of uh, Volvo's, Volvo's leather. So if you require leather or demand leather in your car, then you have to wait for the Molya 26. And now we have saved the best for last. The elephant in the room, the biggest topic and probably the caption of this video. Because there's a huge upgrade coming. Because the current EX90 sits on a 400 volt architecture. The Molya 26 will be on the enhanced 800 volt architecture. 400 volt versus 800 volt. Is it worth the wait and should you wait? That is the big question. In my honest opinion, like a long story short, is it worth the wait? No, it's not worth the wait. A majority of EX90 customers would be more than pleased with grabbing yourself a Molya 25 at the showroom floor or ordering one right now. You would be more than pleased and you would hardly notice any difference. However, if you are one of those 
that frequently go on long road trips. Maybe once a month, twice a month, three times a month, and you drive so far that you exceed the range of your EX90, forcing you to stop at these rapid chargers, then the 800 volt are 100% for you. And then I would highly recommend you to wait for the Molia 26. And that is primarily because of charging. And I'm not talking about AC charging that you do at home. So if you charge your EX90 at home like 99% of the time, then stick with the 400 volt because this here won't have any impact on you. But I'm talking about DC fast charging, rapid charging. And I will try to explain that now. The EX90 has a battery in the floor at 111 kilowatt hours, usable 107 kilowatt hours. It has a peak DC charging at 250 kilowatt. But in order to get 250, you need to visit a Tesla supercharger. Because if you visit a random supercharger, a, a random rapid charger, they usually output 500 amps. And if we do a little calculation here, if you take this 400 volt, so you take 400 volt times the current, so the amperage, 500 amps, 400 times 500, that gives you 200 kilowatt. So that is the peak power that, that you will get on a random rapid charger. You will only get 200 kilowatt. However, if you bump up the current, like Tesla does on their supercharger, up to 625 amps, then you can output more. Then you can get 250 kilowatt, that is the peak power for your EX90. However, if we bump up the voltage of the car up to 800 volt and take the same map, 800 volt times 500 amps, then you get 400 kilowatt. Just by bumping up the voltage of your car, you can lower the current into the car. So the current are the flow, um, the power flow into your car. So with, when we bump the voltage, we can decrease the amperage or the, uh, the current. So you can have lower current. And that is a good thing, lower loss. So you can get 400 kilowatt. So that is the biggest advantage, high speed charging. If we look at another Volvo that has, or actually the only Volvo that currently have the 800 volt, the ES90. That has the same size approximately, it has 102. Oh, is it now 106 kilowatt hour battery? I can put in the numbers uh, on the battery size, but that is 800 volt, and I can peak at 350 kilowatt at a 500 amp charger because of this math that we did. Bumping up the voltage, you can decrease the current and still get pretty high charging speed. And what benefits does this have? Well, the EX90 as it sits today can charge from 10 to 80 at approximately. 30 minutes. I just did a charging test up at Voss, uh, at the Tesla supercharger, and I managed 31 minutes. However, the ES90 has a claim charging curve from 10 to 80 at 20 minutes. So it decreased by 10 minutes. 10 minutes reduction. And on a longer road trips, these 10 minutes will pile up eventually. So you see, there's a huge benefit if you rapid charge often with the bump to 800 volts primarily for rapid charging. And there's something that's called C rating. Maybe this is a little digression because, yeah. But there's something, there's something that's called C rating. That's how fa fast your car can charge. So if you have a 100 kilowatt hour battery and you can charge at 100 kilowatt, then there's one C. And this has a 107 kilowatt hour battery and can peak at 250. So that is 2.3 C, the C rating. The ES90, however, have 3.4C. So you see, there's a huge difference here. So, the biggest difference, rapid charger. And once again, for me personally, I would wait for the 800 volt. Hands down, 800 volt. Because I often go on longer road trips and stop at these rapid chargers. And it's not often, or how often do you stop at a Tesla charger? Me, myself, very, very rarely. I think this one today, just for the test, is the only one I have done the whole year. Usually I stop at other chargers. So it will be a huge benefit for me with higher voltage to lower the current and then get more blast at your random rapid charger. So I think that was um, the explanation on this um, 400 versus 800. 
the benefit, rapid charger. I hope, I don't know this, but I know that the Molya 26 will get 800 volt, but I'm not sure how far they can push it. I hope we can see like 350 kilowatt, same as the ES90, but it would be cool to see 360, 370, 380. That would be really, really cool because this is a big battery. You need to charge it fast, uh, or I want to charge it fast. So it would be cool to see 400. And actually yesterday I got a comment on one of my YouTube videos from, uh, I think the guy was called Tobias. I can overlay the comment here somewhere. Because he had read somewhere in a USA, um, I can't remember where he has read it. But e either way, there was uh, an engine code there, a motor code. And he thought, or um, he said, that the updated EX90 will get the same motors from the ES90. So they, they won't just change the architecture of the car and all the components connecting to that, they will also change the motors. I haven't heard that before, but that is really interesting because the ES90 has really powerful motors. The rear motor was like 381 horsepower, system power was 680 on the twin performance. Imagine if you can go even more than the EX90 delivers today. This is the twin motor that delivers 408 horsepower. The twin performance, 517. Imagine if we could go 600. <laughs> you don't need it because this is more than rapid enough. Okay, but that was a little digression. Because everything are not rosy red. There's always two sides of the medal. The advantage, faster charges. Fa faster charging. The disadvantage, higher cost. Because when you're bumping the power up to 800 volt architecture, everything are more expensive. All the, component, all the components, inverters and all the electrical components that's, that are connected to charging and battery management, they have to be, man or they have to be able to um, cope with this 800 volt, a much higher voltage. So there's more expensive parts, significantly more expensive parts. And that's why I'm expecting that the EX90 from Molya 26 will be more expensive than the Molya 25. I'm not sure by how much, but you can bet your ass that the Molya 26 will be more expensive. And that raises another question. Is it worth the wait? Like financially, is it worth the cost? This is already an expensive vehicle. Is it worth like 50,000 Norwegian kroners more? If that's the increase, is it worth it? No, then you, it is up to you to decide if it's worth it or not. I'm not sure. But for me, I, I want 800 volt, but it all comes with a price, you know? If it's like 100,000 Norwegian kroners more, <laughs> then holy crap, then, then I don't know. Um, so that is, that is the big, is it worth the cost and what are the costs? And I also have another thing in my head. Because in like two or three years, the Molya 25 and the Molya 26 will sit side by side on the second hand market. What car will hold its best value? 25 or 26 with the 800 volt? That is also something to consider when you think about the increased cost. How do they keep up on the second hand market? If you're planning on selling it like in two or three years. But I think that uh, was uh, all I had. If you have any more details or more insight on uh, this transition over, if there's something I missed, then please leave a comment. I'll drop a comment down below and we can continue the chat uh, and also correct me if, there, if I said something that wasn't totally correct. But I, I have tried to explain it as good as, I, as, good as possible. So I hope uh, it, it, it's good. And I also tried, I, I've also tried to ex uh, understand it as good as possible. This is a complex matter with all of these electric cars or computers. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I think it's time to wrap up this video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Here from uh, Garnes, an old uh, train station in uh, just outside of Bergen. Uh, really cool. This is actually, um, I'm not sure what the English word is for, um, it's protected, the architecture of this building, but a really cool location here. I'll grab just a couple of pictures before uh, making this video. But uh, yeah, I hope I'll see you in the next one, the next video with uh, the EX90. I got a lot of videos coming, so I really hope you will enjoy it. But I think it's time to head on further. So thank you for watching and uh, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.